Hey guys, welcome back to the Girl Gun London channel. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I'm a dual US and UK citizen. And in this video, I'm talking about some things I've done in the UK that I'd never done in the US. Now there might be a couple weird shadows in the lighting of this video because I refuse to turn on my artificial lights because the lighting right now is the sun outside. Thank goodness it's coming. It's been sunny for like three days in a row and uh, I'm just making the most of it, which actually will come up later in this video. Okay, so let's jump right in to the things that I do in the UK or have gotten to do in the UK that I don't do or had never done in the US. The first thing, is being able to walk out my front door and into the countryside, even though I do not live in the countryside. So obviously if you live somewhere like London or Manchester or Liverpool or Edinburgh or Cardiff, et cetera, et cetera, it's gonna take you a little bit longer. Those are big UK cities. However, I've noticed that a lot of places in the UK, even if you don't live in a rural area, has such a connection to the surrounding countryside and everything is kind of so close together that you are able in a lot of places, not all, but for me, I can walk out my front door and just like go on a countryside walk within a couple minutes. And this is very true for a lot of people who live in towns and villages in the UK, even though they don't live in a particularly rural area, you don't have to walk too far to find even the countryside or just like a nice nature filled walk. Um, the US is filled with a ton of beautiful natural scenery. However, I grew up in the suburbs of Florida and um, I could have probably walked for three hours and still kind of been in a suburban mass. Um, so the concept here in the UK that I get to be surrounded by nature, even if I don't live in a particularly rural area, um, is a really new thing for me or was a new thing for me when I first moved to the UK and is something that in my experience in the US, I couldn't do, uh, even if I wanted to. Interrupting this video to say, we have a sponsor, cue the confetti and fireworks. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, which fits in perfectly with my theme of the year, which is to actually learn some new skills and hobbies so that I can find some friend groups and different outlets here in the UK. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes that seriously span everything from bird watching to bouquet making to hands lettering. There are also plenty of more informational style of classes to take in some knowledge as opposed to learning a skill. So whatever you're looking to learn, whether it is that kind of more book knowledge or history or language, um, or to learn a physical skill, Skillshare definitely has the class for you. I've been taking a class on outdoor photography by Chris Burkhardt, which is really helping me to see the UK in a whole different way. I wanted something that was going to challenge me to look at things that I've already seen and try and see them in a new way. So typically when I'm like walking in the English countryside, it's maybe the same walk I've taken before and I think, oh, that's really beautiful. But now I'm actually looking at it in a whole different way, trying to capture like pictures at sunrise and sunsets. And when you're going around with the purpose of trying to take pictures, it really becomes like a whole new landscape. So that's been a nice way for me to fall back in love with some of the scenery that is around my local area and around the UK. If you want to try Skillshare for yourself, the first 1000 people to use the link in my description box below or my code will be able to get a one month free trial of Skillshare. There are plenty of British themed classes as well. So whether you're trying to learn more about the UK for your upcoming visit, or you just wanna learn more about your own backyard, definitely check it out. Now back to the video. The second thing is playing bowls. Now, if you're American and you haven't heard of bowls, think of bocce ball. It's very, very similar, but it's not the same game. There are different measurements um, to the place that you play on and it is a different game, but it's very similar in what you're thinking. So you're not rolling cereal bowls down the lawn like I might have pictured. You are rolling these very heavy balls um, down the lawn to try and get the closest to what's called the jack, which is a smaller ball um, that you roll first. So I had never been exposed to this game and never played it in the US, never heard of such a thing. And the first time I played was when we went to Scotland and there was a resort that had, do you call it a bowls pitch? A bowls lawn? A bowl, a place to play bowls, which is basically like a giant turfed 
basically just imagine like a giant, giant square, kind of gutters on the side, and it's about, it's about a foot sunk into the ground, and it's kind of turfed. Um, I'll put up a picture now of a bowl's lawn pitch. Clearly I need to play more. But uh, European bowls, again, is something that I feel like I hear talked about in the UK. Maybe not as much as it used to be based on my research, but people still, everybody knows what bowls is. You might play on vacation or, you know, in a village or something like that. You might be involved or know somebody involved in like a league for playing bowls. In the US, I have not experienced a similar enthusiasm towards bocce. Okay, the third thing on my list of things I do in the UK that I had never done in the US is eating beans with basically everything. So in the UK, we eat, uh, you can get brand name, but Heinz Baked Beans is the most popular brand, but it is not the same taste, flavor, or uh, sauce as it is in the US. So in the US, if we have a baked bean, it's typically going to be like a barbecue flavor and we eat it at barbecues. Basically, that's the time. Or in Texas. In Texas, you just eat them with all the time as well, um, but not really on something else. It's a side dish unto itself. Here in the UK, baked beans are not necessarily a side dish. There's something to put on other food. There's something to put on other food. So I eat baked beans here in the UK on toast. Um, I eat it with fries or chips, as we would say here in the UK. I eat it, I've eaten it on a baked potato or as they would call a jack potato. My husband eats it with pie, like a meat pie and beans. I feel like beans are just a staple addition to like every British meal. I had never ever had beans on toast, beans on a baked potato slash jacket potato. Uh, I hadn't had beans in any of those contexts in the US. It's just not something that we do in America and it is very popular here. I have to say, I do really enjoy beans on all of those things I've mentioned. I feel like beans on toast is the gold standard for me. I won't always have a baked potato with beans because sometimes I just want the other toppings, but definitely like beans on toast is my favorite. We even eat beans with like pizza here. Beans on everything. Okay, the next thing I do in the UK that I had never done in the US, and this is a little bit of a weird one, is eat slash hand out cake in a napkin. So Brits watching might be like, what are you talking about? How is that even, a, what, what do you, what's the difference? Americans typically do not eat slices of cake in a napkin with no fork. Um, he, the different types of cakes that are popular in each of the countries means that an American slice of cake, say at a birthday party or event or something, is typically going to require a plate, or at least we feel it requires a plate and a fork. You can't eat an American piece of cake often with your hands because of the type of icing and how kind of fluffy the cake is. It would just instantly fall apart in your hand. In the UK, they prefer like a denser kind of cake and typically the icing is not going to be as like fluffy as an American icing. So often the types of cakes that you will be handing out at a birthday party or event in the UK can be served in a napkin. And again, it's one of those weird things that as an American, when you're first, someone hands you a piece of cake in a napkin with no utensils, you're like, what am I supposed to do with this? Um, and you just pick it up and eat it with your hands in the napkin. So I had never done this before, and now I am a pro. Who needs a plate? Who needs a fork? Take your piece of cake in this napkin. Again, if you did this in a lot of places in the US with a lot of types of cakes that we hand out, you would have a massive mess on your hands. Um, no pun intended. So that is my next thing that I do in the UK, but not in the US. The next thing that I do in the UK that I never did in the US, and this is also based on my location in the US because I am from Florida, is I always change my plans in the UK when it's sunny. Almost never paid attention to the weather in the US, and I would contend that in a lot of states it's similar. Obviously, there are going to be some states in the US that are more similar to the UK in terms of the weather patterns, but for most of the South and particularly where I'm from, 
Weather doesn't really play into life in the same way it does here. So I mentioned in the beginning of my video that it was actually sunny today and it's been sunny for th like three or four days. And we, every time you wake up and you see a sunny day, basically I try and rearrange my whole day to take advantage of the sun. And this is particularly a thing in the winter months. It is a bit sunnier in the summer months, thank goodness, in the UK. But in the winter months, when you just do not see the sun for such a long period of time, the sun comes out and I'm like, I had three meetings. Um, I was going to rearrange the whole house. I had a, a arrangement with the Pope and I'm like, cancel everything. We are going outside. What are we going to do outside? We can just sit outside and stare at the sun for all I care. Um, but definitely... Being in the UK has made me very attuned to changing my plans, to being aware of the weather, and to really taking advantage of the sun when it comes out. Now the next thing on my list that I had never tried or experienced or known about before living in the UK was malt vinegar. So malt vinegar, which looks like this, is something that a lot of Brits will eat on what they call chips, which are basically like a chunky fry for Americans watching. Yes, British people, I know that it's not a chunky fry to you, but that is the easiest way to explain it to an American. Malt vinegar uh, is typically also enjoyed with like fish and chips. That's where I was exposed to it. I don't typically have malt vinegar on my fries if I'm on my chips, sorry, if I'm not eating fish and chips, but I know people do have it in other contexts. Anyway, vinegar as a condiment by itself is not super popular in the US. Um, certainly people must have tried it and it must be a thing somewhere, but it's not a culturally significant enough thing for me to have ever heard about it or known about it or tried it all of my years living in the US. Like beans, I do enjoy malt vinegar on my chips with fish and chips. I didn't used to, but it just, you just become accustomed over the years. I tried it and then it was like a fun extra thing to do. I still had ketchup as well, so it's very vinegary on my fish and chips plate. But using malt vinegar as a condiment is another thing that I had never experienced until I moved to the US, to the UK. And the final thing on my list of things I learned in the UK, um, and all of my British audience will be so proud of me right now, is putting my fork and knife together on my plate like this after I'm finished with my meal. This is considered the way to tell anybody that you're dining with that you are finished in the UK. It is the polite way to end your meal. You line up your fork and you line up your knife. And if you're at a restaurant, this tells the waiter that you are ready for your plate to be taken or, you know, when it's time, you're finished, you don't need any more. It's also the same thing if you're sitting around a table eating dinner with people. It tells everybody who is finished, who's still working on it. Um, in the US, we do not have this custom, at least where I grew up in the South. Your fork and knife had no significance on your plate before or after the meal. You finished your meal and you finished eating and your fork and knife kind of ended up on the plate however you wanted to put it on there. So I had never been exposed to this custom or to this uh, particular way of like dining etiquette until I moved to the UK. So that is why it's on my list and I do do it in the UK all of the time because I know that it's a custom here. Okay, so that brings us to the end of our video. Thank you so much for watching. And typically, sometimes when I get to the end of a video, I like to leave a little Easter egg so that you can comment below and let me know if you actually made it to the end of my video. Are you a real subscriber or do you click off in the middle? Um, so today's question is uh, on our topic of Skillshare and learning new things, what uh, topic or hobby or activity would you most like to learn about? What's something that you've always wanted to do? Is it learn a specific language? Is it learn a sport? Is it just learning about a topic or a part of history or whatever it is? Comment below and let me know what you would like to learn. Um, and that will be our little Easter egg to figure out if you made it to the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.